Okay, uh, quieting down. Uh, so, a little uh, background about what I'm going to speak is uh, I used Solaris a long time ago, and well, I used Solaris a long time ago because I switched to Open Solaris the first time it could reliably boot every single time, yeah, and uh, then Elimos and other things like that, but. Uh, the FreeBSD system is much more flexible in uh, its philosophy of uh, allowing you a, a much lower level control with higher level tools. So a uh, concept of a boot environment in uh, Solaris is much more useful in FreeBSD. And um, basically what uh, it allows you uh, to do in Solaris is it uh, allows you to maintain uh, different states of your installed operating system with uh, different set of packages and software versions and everything else and uh, basically perform safe upgrades. Uh, some of the packaging tools will actually force you to do that when upgrading your system. But with FreeBSD, you can uh, use the exact uh, same subsystem, which is a subsystem of ZFS, to do a lot more different things uh, you can, of course, uh, upgrade safely, and you can revert your changes. Uh, you can track different branches of uh, FreeBSD. Like when the Beehive was uh, still an SVN branch, you can uh, track it on the same desktop computer or something else like that. And uh, you can uh, additionally boot uh, through multiple different kernels. And... Um, you can uh, build a boot environment in a jail, you can boot it in a jail, or you can transfer a jail to an environment that you can directly boot from, so it integrates with those really nicely. And um, also, you can uh, actually deploy your already pre-made boot environment um, over a secure shell, ZFS send receive, to uh, a different computer entirely just uh, TFTP some uh, installation kernel, and uh, after that, just uh, gate um, the bootable environment into it. So make system installation very uh, predictable in what you're going to get. And uh, yeah, that's what it is right here. And um, what um, OpenSolaris does uh, when you first install it is it, uh, the pool that's not data where your operating system is stored has a root volume where it uh, dumps most non-volatile data, uh, things that are in TMP or things like that uh, in uh, different boot environments. Um, and uh, there are a couple of utilities provided for uh, with OpenSolaris to actually make use of it. The BE Adam, uh, Never actually used it manually, um, but it exists. And uh, there is, um, and you're actually forced to get a new environment during an upgrade. Uh, with um, FreeBSD, uh, you basically are trying to get a um, a pool, uh, sorry, not a pool, a um, a volume that has all of those boot environments for easy management in a place where you can predict them. So the steps are roughly this. You back everything up because you don't know whether uh, you're not going to be able to boot. And uh, yeah, uh, it, just do it a few times. And uh, if you have done it just once, you probably won't be able to boot. Uh, then uh, snapshot the volumes. Uh, <coughs> Create this pool where you want them to go. Uh, send them there through uh, ZFS send and receive. And um, then uh, set a few settings um, so that it's actually bootable. Uh, one of the um, gotchas in here is that you need the loader.conf updated if you're booted from a pool from inside the pool. So you're going to actually have to mount it and adjust the file there and not your host one. Uh, and um, clean up after you uh, reboot it. And uh, it's uh, fairly safe and painless. Even if you have a UFS boot partition, you just uh, need to reinstall the GPT. Okay. Is your microphone working? 
Yeah, I think so. This one right here? Yeah. Hello, can you hear me better? Yeah, there you go. Oh, fantastic. Sounds good. Uh, sorry, what was I saying about? Oh, if you boot from a UFS partition, uh, you can still uh, boot, uh, put your uh, boot files into a uh, ZFS uh, pool, and uh, then you'll just need to update your bootloader to allow you to do that. And um, there are several things you can do with it in uh, terms of management. And uh, the, one of the things you don't ever want to do is you don't want to change amount from underneath of uh, some files that you're actually using. Because when you're taking snapshot, uh, there might uh, be some time elapsed when um, the file has changed and uh, you, you can't actually uh, predict either whether the um, host operating system is going to let go of that mount before remount. So doing it automatically is uh, very bad and can trip you up a lot. Uh, on my website, I recommend you to do this. Uh, don't do this. Yeah. But uh, you can actually uh, do the remounts uh, that uh, you would only expect to happen uh, on a reboot if you set uh, your uh, mounts to note or on your uh, original system and uh, then to off on the new system and then switch them to on when you are uh, done setting it up. And you can leave those at no auto before the reboot. And um, so there are a few common tasks you might be able to do it. You uh, can clone the boot environments very uh, precisely in terms of what you're going to get. Uh, you can uh, switch which one you're booting from, and uh, you want to be able to uh, destroy them too. And um, I just uh, typed up uh, sample procedures, very simple for uh, doing those tasks once you already uh, have this thing established. And um, to clone it, it's very simple. You just uh, create a snapshot, and uh, you send and receive those snapshots to a new file system. And then you can destroy the snapshots that uh, you just created. And uh, with even very big pools, uh, sometimes it can be very quick to do this. And um, to actually switch it, you need to uh, not forget to uh, actually change your loader.conf in your uh, preferred way of doing that. Uh, so if you keep it in a revision control system, if you do anything like that, you just need to change it at this point. But, um, and this needs to happen in a new pool that you're uh, trying to boot from. Uh, then you need to uh, set the boot environment for it, and uh, you need to set the Z pool to recognize it as a boot file system too. So those are the three things that uh, I've listed earlier. And um, destroying a boot environment is very simple. You just sort and destroy. And uh, there are actually, once you have uh, set it up to a uh, working situation, and I find myself just managing those things in a very custom way, but there are, um, um, there are some tools that I'm going to discuss later that are already available for doing that. So um, you can, uh, for example, snapshot your root environment, and uh, you can test some volatile changes in a jail. Or uh, you can actually convert an uh, environment to a jail and back. Or, uh, <coughs> Uh, you can actually uh, netboot, netboot a blank system into uh, a TFTP kernel and then just send and receive uh, the boot environments that you already prepared for installation on another system. And um, those are just uh, some of the utilities that I found um, lying around uh, that might assist you with managing it.
Uh, th this uh, has actually been around for uh, a couple of years now. Um, it's um, basically a, a simple instruction on how to convert it and uh, some of the scripts to um, automate um, it for you, the management of it. <coughs> and um, <coughs> this one is actually uh, by uh, Vermadness, a very uh, recent one. I've only uh, found out about it on uh, Tuesday. Um, uh, this one uh, attempts, it's in ports, it's available in ports, and uh, it, it's just a very simple shell script and uh, it attempts to give you compatible output and uh, compatible uh, behavior from the VADMA utility on Solaris, which is uh, very nice if that's what you're used to. And um, Right now, I'm uh, going to just show you doing some tasks with that. So, and this is also a uh, time for a discussion, too. Um, let me just uh, set up a FreeBSD box real quick. Mm-hmm. Sorry, should probably uh, create a bigger one. So um, once it's uh, booted up, I'm uh, going to do a very simple uh, ZFS install as to uh, what a person might uh, have without the foresight of uh, preparing for uh, using of the boot environments. And um, And um, okay, and this is one seven two two four. One seven two two four one three three two oh six. And it just takes a few moments to do that. And uh, converting it to uh, use boot environments uh, from a working system uh, can be very safe if um, you just uh, pay attention to uploading where it's booting from in uh, three different places. So. Uh, this is up here at virtual disk now? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it's installed. So. Uh, you see, it uh, created a, a very large amount of uh, extra pools, uh, so that if you have a large amount of pools, uh, it would be uh, very uh, bad to provide an example with a small amount of pools. So um, you basically want to snapshot. Uh, just take an initial snapshot of your um, R pool. And uh, need to add flags after comments. And uh, now I want to create uh, 
the root directory for it. And uh, the initial one, when you're just setting it up, I just send receives a snapshot first. Uh, but after that, um, it can be automated too. And um, I also have swaps that's not mount mounted that can be shared. So I'm also going to destroy that snapshot too, so I don't get confused. And uh, I can just uh, list things that uh, have the snapshots right now. And uh, also just uh, names of my snapshots. And uh, now I can actually uh, iterate through them. And it's just uh, send receive. then it's going to be the base V that I just created and already transferred the root to it already. And, uh, let's see, where's my uh, incorrect... Oh, I need, I need the... Uh, this. and uh, escape some of those guys too. All right, and uh, that actually happens pretty quickly too. And uh, let's list some snapshots. And I can go ahead and delete them now. And uh, there are none right now. So uh, now the point where you can trip up pretty badly is the mounts. Uh, ideally, uh, those are the things that um, I want to set uh, it not to auto mount right now, so they don't uh, auto unmount and the other ones too. Sorry, uh, just a uh, little nervous. Oh, can mount. That's the one I want. And uh, such as a swap. And now I want to grab for this and set it explicitly to off. And actually, let me set it to no auto as well.
and just to change some um, the loader file, I need to do this too. And uh, okay. Now let's make it back off. And uh, now I need to actually adjust the mount point to point to the root directory of all of those things. And uh, uh, you can see that those aren't mounted right now, but they are uh, replicated with the correct mount points. And now I just can do this and uh, reboot and um, That should come up all right. Ideally. No, I forgot to actually uh, destroy the mount point locations from the other pool, but uh, since it's not auto mounted, it uh, shouldn't really be a big deal. And it looks like it is uh, mounted correctly. And uh, after this, um, I can just uh, clean up the files I had previously. So uh, this one I can't just destroy. So all right, that's actually good. But I can just go ahead and uh, destroy my original things other than swap. And... Uh I sort them. I can do that. And uh, you can see that uh, my system currently has a swap and it's booted from the one uh, boot environment right now. And I can uh, just clone it to many more boot environments that have various source trees, various ports trees various softwares, and it's uh, very easy to launch them inside of jails as well. Um, so it's kind of everybody is silent. Any questions? Anything else you would like to see? Yeah, go ahead. Well, uh, you can do a FreeBSD update in a different environment, uh, so you can reboot to something clean and do that. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, as uh, far as its capability to run in an altered environment, such as a router or jails, and yes, it can be done like that too. Yes? So have you created scripts that can do this all in uh, one or two steps? Uh, yes, uh, one and two steps. I uh, actually have some on my uh, slides. Uh, oh, you mean the preparation. I would not advise scripting us uh, because there's a lot of uh, nitty-gritty that uh, can fail. But after than that, uh, you should probably automate it. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't uh, automate converting your uh, operating system to use a uh, different um, boot destination in a script. But uh, the steps are basically there. Uh, if you see the, uh, I can put out a script. It sounds pretty simple. But I would recommend actually syncing and uh, doing it manually so you can troubleshoot stuff. We have a script that talks of how to do this. This is what you want to do. Yeah, but uh, there is this command uh, called uh, yes <laughs> that I like using a lot, or things like this. And uh, having something that wouldn't be good for my years, definitely. Uh, there are people who like piping yes to things. Uh, I've been uh, using uh, boot environments on uh, FreeBSD for uh, about two years now, and it hasn't at all been glitchy. Or uh, I haven't actually done any real off of disk installs anymore, ex except for this um, over Netcat. But uh, you can really prepare your uh, root file systems to just be deployed to different machines like that. Yeah? So when we did that install, it seemed much, much faster than the last time I installed it from CD. Oh, uh, I installed it from CD. Uh, I just uh, had all of my non interactive tasks in a script and I piped it with Netcat, so it's yeah, very fast. The, Uh, it uses Antar internally. Uh, it, it, I still unpack from the distribution sets on the CD. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, I don't know what uh, could explain the performance difference. Uh, I'm only extracting the base in the kernel for the sake of demonstration. Uh, none of the other things. So no like uh, lib32 or any of those distributions. Um, uh, this is on disk. Uh, yeah, the CDs. The, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, because it's on a hard disk, uh, they spin very slowly. But uh, you can actually unpack the distribution sets from NFS or something like that. It uh, still is not a requirement to have an optical disk. Yeah? Sorry? Go ahead. Um, is there any consideration of adding this to the current installer? Oh, uh, I haven't... talk about adding GFS support into the installer as well. If it <coughs> did some of this initial setup for you. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I don't know. I actually haven't used the installer since before it got updated. I used PC sys install once, and that already handles CFS quite well. Uh, so t uh, if you are installing on a ZFS on a brand new computer from optical media, uh, I would recommend the PC sys install from the uh, PC BSD project. It uh, lets you have your way with uh, configuration files the way it's parsed. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. Uh huh. Um, but as you can tell, if uh, you have at least one system that uh, has boot environments that they can send and receive, then uh, with MakeWorld, uh, you really ought to never have to use an installer again. But uh, the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if once. Uh, the graphical uh, interface to the PC system style is uh, very lacking to the features that it actually has. If you uh, read the um, sample files that come with it, uh, PC system style can be run unattended. Yeah. 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 I I exactly. That would be good too. Yeah, uh, that would be pretty great. I'd love to do that too. I uh, haven't really considered it yet, but that does sound pretty great. Um, yeah? Uh, one of the, uh, uh, let me just show you how installing a new system works. So you just uh, launch it, like something like this, and uh, you give it your uh, FreeBSD image. And uh, all you basically need to do is to create a pool and then make it boot. But then you can uh, send and receive your file system. So um, let's get an IP address. And uh, for expedience sake, I'm just going to uh, let me see what I need here. Uh, out of this. Um, Probably you need less lines than that, and uh, less lines than that. Okay, um, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, to get my IP address again, uh, 172.24133, 172.24133, and uh, let me see whether it has too much stuff. Yeah, it does. And uh, now you can uh, do things like that. Hmm. Netcat, I'm going to have to use this. Mm. Let's uh, get an IP address here. This guy is 215. This guy is also uh, 215. OK. 
Okay, it's much better. And uh, this guy is... There it goes. Uh, so that's uh, 88. And uh, the other one is... Uh, 174, 133, 174. And uh, if you're net booting, then it's so much smoother. set a uh, persistent plugin here and uh, this one I forgot the IP address of this one already And this is uh, 174. Just gonna fail, so and uh, now I should be able to send and receive using this thing. And there it goes, it's uh, populating the other guy. Since I'm actually bridging to a, a wider wireless network, it might uh, take a little bit longer, or it seems to be done. Um, and you uh, see your new base just being transferred right here. And you just do the same thing with the rest of your pools, too. But um, then you can basically make it bootable, and uh, you can uh, transfer your existing installations like that, too. very quick. Uh, it uh, does it on a file system level rather than a file level. And um, you can actually, if, if you clone your um, base uh, snapshot, and uh, you can actually launch it inside the jail too. So for example, something I can do is um, Let me just destroy this thing. And um, Now I can uh, transfer it like this. Uh, this will actually let you uh, strip a lot of the information that is, uh, you would have to parse some other way if you do that dash H flag. Um, I 
actually make sure that I'm still in SH. All right, I'm not. So let's do it with Seychell. Um, not a very big Seychell user. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, still reporting that other thing too. Uh, very easy to test. My uh, while syntax actually works. So yeah, I did uh, switch to SH. Nice. Uh, my uh, shell variable was kind of deceiving me. And uh, now I just... Um, You just have to run a substitution in that. And uh, it ends at snap one. And you wanted to go to let's actually stick some uh, escapes in there. Newbie and one. This. Uh, quote, 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 quote. Uh, what do I need where and where? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't hear you. Uh, uh, no, that's replacing this with this. Um, maybe it's uh, some uh, texting. Uh, I'll just retype it. Um, Um, I'll just cheat and uh, put it in a new thing. No, I can't really do that. Oh, um, I was replacing the wrong variable.
a uh, newbie. One, two. But uh, now you basically have a newbie right here that I can mount somewhere, right? Let me just destroy some snapshots. sure that there's some stuff there that's good. Uh, no, just some of it. But um, the way you would launch it is basically um, using the gl command with a new directory and it persist. You can also do it from here. Uh, any more questions? Suggestions, way to make it uh, quicker, more manageable. <laughs> yeah, I, I I guess it's time. Uh, no, uh, just shell scripts. Uh, nothing new in systems in system, but um, there is a port that's available. I don't know if it's packaged yet. Um, if you actually have a ports directory. I'm not sure where it is. Uh, uh, this one uh, scripts some things for you. This is uh, the one I just found out about a few days ago. And it's um, a shell script that does roughly the same thing, but attempts to mirror the output of the Solaris utility and the behavior of it, too. Thanks. <laughs>